it would be very helpful for everybody to participate because it's our parish and we're moving forward and, and where we see ourselves going. So thank you. Thanks. It looks like Kate wants to make an announcement too. Announcements, announcements, announcements. Um, it's just a reminder that we're starting the Lenten Bible cl uh, Club today called The Unfolding Gospel by John Bowen, I think it is. We'll meet probably 20, 25 minutes after the service so you can get your coffee or tea and a cookie or something down in the um, fireside room. Thank you. That seems as good an opportunity as any way uh, for you folks to do your introductions. Come on up. Yeah. Okay, so today we welcome three members of the Indwell team to our worship service. Daniel, who remained in his seat over there, is that Strathern Suites? And um, Indwell is a growing Christian charity that creates and operates affordable, supportive housing in southern and southwestern Ontario for people who are seeking health, wellness, and belonging. And Hamilton Indwell supports more than 500 homes. Just Brand, regional manager for Indwell and Hamilton, will be giving the homily today. She has worked for Indwell for 12 years and has been active in church mission and church planting in Hamilton for 20 years. She was drawn to working with Indwell through church community engagement. As regional manager, Just supports Indwell's current programs and provides direction for future programs and initiatives. Jess and her husband, Tim, and their three children are part of New Hope Community Church, which meets in an Indwell building in Hamilton's East End. This church has many Indwell tenants as members. She blends experience with the ins and outs of supportive housing and working with churches, both in her personal and professional life. Theresa Howe is Indwell's community engagement manager and has been serving with Indwell since 2011. In her role, she's involved with donor relations and fundraising. She also oversees the communications team. She especially enjoys interactions with churches. She and her husband love living in Hamilton and are parents to five adult children. They enjoy hosting a, a church group in their home most Tuesday evenings. Immediately following the service, Teresa will give us an introduction to the work of Indwell and will be available for a question and answer session during coffee time. So, welcome. 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 Okay. The uh, one longish, sorry, announcement to make. After the service, while you're getting coffee and you're preparing to uh, deal with questions about Indwell and you're getting ready to go to the Lenten Bible study, we're going to distribute to you your uh, stewardship envelopes. We tried handing those out at uh, the 8.30 service, but everybody was reading them throughout the homily, so we're going to <laughs> wait until after the service for you to have a look at those. There are a couple of things, very important things I want to say about those uh, letters before you open them. The first is, remember at our vestry meeting we passed two motions. One was that we would engage in a campaign to help deal with our projected deficit this year, which is in the neighborhood of $30,000. Uh, the vestry voted to uh, offer that campaign and this letter is the beginning of that particular campaign. The way the letters work is that uh, we looked at what you gave last year confidentially and we projected on the basis of the percentage increase we need what you might want to give this year. And there's a form for you to increase your giving should be, you be able. That's the first most important thing. The second most important thing is God and I love you equally. There is uh, no, uh, there will be no uh, running around and patting on the back the people who are the largest givers, as much as you may suspect that. We have no idea what your circumstances are, generally. We don't know whether this challenge to you is going to be great or small or not possible. 
So it's really up to you to make the decision about whether or not you can meet this challenge. And uh, I want you to think and pray about that as best you can and uh, fill in the form prayerfully, mindful that God loves us all equally. Is that clear? Yeah, we got that? Uh, there's got to be a third thing, right? <laughs> the third thing is that we also passed a motion that we need to deal with our historic debt. Not deficit, debt. That was a very helpful distinction that came out of Vestry. So our historic debt has to do with some of the money still owing that we borrowed from the rectory fund in order to uh, complete this building. The rest of it is what's owing to the diocese for our mission share and a little, uh, a little uh, bit of salaries which we have not met and the diocese has great graciously covered all those off for us. You'll be hearing more about that campaign from the chairs, uh, Mr. Swing and Mr. Taylor, uh, later on. That's not what this letter is about. So you need to bear that in mind when you're making your uh, pledge for the letter. All good? Okay. I think we should start. <laughs> Would you please stand? As always, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. The territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Covenant. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect.
by your spirit that he might emerge to fulfill his mission. Lead us by your spirit. Nicodemus was challenged to be born again by your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. The Samaritan woman was offered living water when she came to the well where Jesus sat. Satisfy our thirst through your spirit. The one born blind was freed from guilt and despair by the touch of Jesus. Heal us through your spirit. Lazarus died but found new life in the power of Jesus' words. Raise us by your spirit. Almighty God, whose Son was revealed in majesty before death on the cross, give us faith to perceive this glory, that being strengthened by grace, we may be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated or kneel as you're comfortable. God, you are good and upright, and you instruct sinners in your ways. Show us how to break down the barriers separating us from each other. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Forgive us for the times we have abandoned the poor, the disabled, and the homeless. Teach us to live by the law of love in unity, peace, and harmony. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Forgive us for the ways we exclude people of different race, culture, or gender. Guide us that we may come to mutual understanding and care. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Draw us into your community to embrace those with whom we need to be reconciled. Grant that all who seek to heal divisions between peoples may have hope. Lead, Lead us, us through, through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Show us your ways, O Lord. Teach us your paths and guide us toward your truth. Lead us through the wilderness of sin to find new life. God looks upon our failings with mercy, and with unending mercy grants us forgiveness and a new start as we seek to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Accept that mercy and fresh beginning in the name of the one who created us, who walked among us, and who calls us to faithfulness. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. <laughs> I guess I'm Elijah today. A reading from the book Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Six days later, 
Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed him, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. everyone. As you know, my name is Jess, and I come from Indwell. I also bring you greetings from downtown Hamilton in the East End from New Hope Church. Uh, as coming from one church to another church, I think that there's like a biblical precedent, right, of coming and, and bringing you greetings and honoring what you're doing here in this neighborhood here on Mohawk Road and uh, in the community surrounding it. So a blessing to you from New Hope Church. Today's reading, I should say, this is a new tradition for me to uh, go from the lectionary. Uh, it's been, uh, I use magical, Holy Spirit magical. Uh, it's been magical to see uh, what God is doing uh, through, uh, through the word and in creation. Uh, so today's reading takes us back, the Old Testament reading, takes us back to a central figure in biblical history, Abram. Can I move this? Is this better? I feel like I was tinging before and maybe not, couldn't be heard. It takes us back to Abram and the beginning of God's covenant with Abram that ultimately culminates in Jesus. Often, when we think back to those Old Testament stories, we think of them just as this way, of stories of God's people. They're interesting and sometimes strange and often quite fantastical, like talking donkeys, massive boats, it's also hard to repeat them sometimes to someone who's never heard these stories before. We think small. We think about those stories. A few years ago, who am I kidding? It was almost 20 years ago. My husband and I developed a devotional series for the Outreach Baseball League that we were running. Without realizing our context, I thought it would be great to put together a series about the promises of God. And each week, we told another story from the Old Testament that shared a promise pointing to its fulfillment in Jesus. It wasn't a bad series, but Tim's team, made up nearly entirely of folks from the community with no church background, they were bewildered and distracted by the unusualness of the stories. And the point of God's promises was lost on them. It was well-intentioned, but it sure didn't land. And we do that sometimes with these stories. When we read the call to Abram, the point is actually that this is the beginning of God showing who God truly is. So that's the actual point of that story. In church words, this is the beginning of the revelation of God's presence with God's people in history. We need to dream bigger. It's not about Abram. This is a story about God with themes that go far beyond the actions of the people. Perhaps you knew this already, but in researching about this particular passage, I encountered commentary that links the call of Abram with the Tower of Babel, or Babel, depends on if you can pronounce it correctly. 
where people really became assured of their own magnificence and its capability and set out to show it. And then God scrambled their communication, in essence, humbling them in the midst of their splendor. Those people were thinking big. They needed to think of themselves smaller. The point of these stories and this pivotal one in the original call of Abram is what is God doing? What do we know about God because of the story? Abram will give up land, roots, and inheritance to show that God is blessing all nations through Abram. And not just Abram's family, and not just the genetic lineage of Abram, because Abraham's line led to Jesus, and Jesus came to bless the entire world with God's big story. At every level, this message is one of surrender because God is doing something big. The Old Testament stories continue this way, people making God in their image, believing they know, God reminding them of his eternal creating nature, them responding, people thinking small of their imminent situations, not dreaming big, and trusting God to work out the story. That continues all the way up to the New Testament reading, the transfiguration. Picture this, so if you can, if you've ever seen pictures of the Holy Land, you can even just do it here. Picture the escarpment. So these friends have seen and done much together. Their time together has been full, so full with possibility. There's a song that we've sung in my community. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done. That's what was happening. There was this incredible vibe. And today they climb the escarpment, the mountain together, and they stand and they look out over the view while they talk. And then Jesus begins to glow. It's golden hour, but the sun is Jesus. And Peter's just thinking. He's like, man, this is familiar. I think this is how Moses' face must have looked when he came down from Mount Sinai. And then Moses is there. Moses and Elijah arrive. What to do? What to do? Peter, ever the quick thinker, takes in this new information rapidly. And with all of his precocious spirit, he declares, well, this is really a good thing. More prophets. Maybe they'll help us bring this message out. We need to help them feel welcome, to have presence with us. Let's set up tents, just like we do at the Feast of Tabernacles. I wonder what's next. God's voice from the cloud may just as well have said, Peter, stop talking. Actually, the cloud does interrupt, right? Like if you see that part, the cloud, while Peter's still talking, the voice from the cloud says, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. And then the kicker, I love this part, listen to him. Stop talking. Peter, who wanted to make sense of the situation, and he just wanted to help, and he offered to help. I can identify with Peter. Can you? Peter was so focused on doing what was in front of him that he missed, almost missed, what God was doing. Peter was thinking small. He needed to dream bigger. Not only is Jesus doing incredible things here on the earth, he's also God's presence right? Doing those things, but also being God's presence. The word made flesh, God's promise fulfilled. Thankfully, God can thunder with a mighty thunder and shake us up. Once again, God is reminding his people that he's God, and we better take care that we don't let our actions get ahead of our ability to notice what God is doing. And dear friends, I can call you friends. There's conviction for all of us in about how we respond to what God has done and is doing. This is a call to the big C church, who's witness to Jesus in the Bible and in our lives. Abram's story is about God, and when we confine it to this earthly realm, we can see how God's word can be twisted, right? And manipulated to become about nation building and about conquest and other terrible, grievous things that we mourn and confess about the church's work in history. Jesus' presence on earth is about God. And if we miss that, we may do good things here on earth, but it'd be kind of like building a tent that confines a prophet and misses the thunder from heaven. What does this mean for me, for you, for us? I feel particularly compelled when I think about Peter's response to the magnificent guests. He sees a problem and he finds the opportunity. I appreciate his plucky courage. I also see how small his action is compared to what God wanted to do through Jesus, and also through Peter, as we see later. 
God's story is not just about what is happening here in this moment for just that group of disciples, for just the nation of Israel. At that transfiguring moment, God was tying Jesus into the beginning and the eternity of time. Today, for me in this moment, I'm humbled and reminded to think small about myself. This may be true for you. Maybe I'm just confessing to you. I'm not the creator. I am the created. I do tend to be impulsive, and I really enjoy solving a good problem. In this story, I'm reminded to pause and ask, what is God doing? We, now this is for all of us, we were made for delight. We were made by a creator who delighted in us, in an incredible creation with interconnectedness, with complexity, with diversity, with abilities and capacity. That's this. That's us, folks. We've lost and we continue to lose our perspective on who is creator and who is created, whose idea is all of this, and we get ahead of ourselves. And this causes damage and untold legacies of damage across history. So I'm humbled and reminded to think small, but I have hope. My actions are not isolated to this present moment. Our actions and all of the incredible work that I've seen on the bulletin boards around here, the actions of the Church of Resurrection, are not just isolated to this present moment. We are reminded to dream bigger about God. I'm acting within the context, we're acting within the context of God's bigger story. When we respond humbly, we believe that these actions can be woven into a bigger picture. Right now, we see through a glass darkly. One day, we shall see fully. We are the created, not the creator, and this is a good thing. We are loved, we are loved, we are loved. I can't get through a message without saying that. The God of eternity knows us and yet is still at work in us and beyond us. The Bible revelation shows this, and we know there are moments in time when we see this. Sometimes it's in a mighty unusual way, like thunder from heaven, and more often, it's in tiny, repeated, miraculous ways. New birth, physical healing, modern medication, things that we hear and see when we get to know each other's stories. And now from my indwell perspective, when I put my indwell hat on, providing supported affordable housing, this message is a reminder to not get too far ahead of ourselves. In helping professions, and I'd say as the church too, we can get ahead of ourselves with our own ideas and the pressure and the drive to care. This can make us do things that maybe aren't as helpful as they could be. We can become short-sighted. I tread carefully here, but sometimes, I tread very carefully here, I don't know what you're all doing, but sometimes we don't need another meal program, and sometimes we don't need another clothing drive. We need something different. Sometimes we need a slower, longer solution that really looks at the problem, going upstream to see what is at the root of the reason why so many people need help. I think as we go upstream, we'd see a lack of affordable housing, of course. But when we go even further upstream, we'd see that people don't see people as people anymore. That's a lot of people. We don't see one another anymore. We've lost our ability to connect and that delight Right? The delight the creator has in us, we've lost that delight in one another. This message also gives hope, though, not just despair and caution. That we are part of the bigger story and that God is doing bigger things than we can imagine. And I'm going to share a story about Sandy. Sandy, who entered my world through Indwell's housing in 2016. Sandy needed help. It's a good thing. I like to help. She was brought to an intake meeting for Indwell by St. Clair Church, along with folks from the shelter where she was staying and the case manager assigned to her by the women's program. Sandy shared her story with us. And over the years after she moved in, we became part of her story too. It was a story of broken relationships, substance use that robbed her relationships even further, but then also a story of friendship and ability. Sandy passed away from her cancer last fall. Her threat to me, Jess, make sure you get yourself checked out. Because when you're homeless, you don't participate in cancer screening programs because you're living in the now. At her funeral, her celebration of life, the 100 people gathered there universally shared stories of how Sandy cared for them, how she connected them, how she donated to their kids' mission trips, invited them over for coffee. Sandy flipped my notion of helping on its head. 
while Sandy was still broken in her substance use, she cared for us and built others up and embodied love. I want to live that way. People of God, think small. Dream bigger. We are all in God's hands. Amen. Greater things are yet to be done. Greater things. Greater things are yet to be done. Greater things are still to be done. Amen. Would you stand for the affirmation of faith? Marked by a cross, cherished and forgiven, we are traveling home, called to be holy, called to be happy. We are traveling home, across deserts, over mountains, we are traveling home. God in our hearts, God in our lives, we are traveling home. Please sit, stand or kneel as you're comfortable to pray. Take a moment to quieten our hearts, to listen for God. On this Sunday in Lent, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life embraced by God's holy word. Let us pray for all of those in need, saying, God of love, hear our prayer. For all nations in distress, want, war, and upheaval. We pray especially for the Ukraine, Turkey, and Syria, and all of those places affected by natural and man-made disasters. We pray for those killed in the train crash in Greece. We pray for those who lost their lives in avalanches in British Columbia. We pray for those who were brave enough to sail away from their country looking for freedom and security for those who drowned. God of love, we pray for those who strive to protect us every day and for those who choose to give, to themse give themselves to you. We continue to pray for all members of the Canadian Armed Forces, Rangers and Cadets, that they may be safe while doing the work of this and other countries. God of love, for this community of Greater Hamilton, and in particular for people in any kind of difficulty, that this Lent may teach us to be true friends of those in need. We keep in our hearts the ministries of St. Matthew's House, Neighbor to Neighbor, Mission Services, and the Kyle Holt Memorial Food Drive, and for all who do God's work. God of love, we give special thanks and praise for those who in created and work for Indwell. The work that they tirelessly do creating affordable housing for the support of people seeking health and wellness, for those who need a sense of belonging. Lord, keep us ever mindful of the needs of others. God of love, we pray for our bishop, Susan Bell, and for many workers here at this church, especially Leon, Margaret, Elizabeth, and Bob. We give thanks for our choir, whose sound lifts us. And we give special thanks to the leadership of Jim Sandilands, and we pray for our parochial committee. God of love, we also keep in our prayers those who devote their time and talents to bring back our community lunch program. 
where they have developed a welcoming and fun space. God of love, for those who have died, that they may join with all the saints that have gone before them at God's heavenly table, that their thirst for life without end may be satisfied. God of love, We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, for Marilyn H., Frank, Fred, John and Sylvie, Norma, Dolores, Molly and Gloria, Charlotte, Elsie, Faye, David, Diane R., for Mabel and Gary, Harry, Karen, Marlene, for Wyatt, Lisa and Martin, Dulcie, Phyllis C., Susan Turnbull, for Josh and Victor, Dennis, Millicent W., Andrew B., Perry C., for Larry, Claire, Sheila, Emily V., for Tino and Emmy Miranda, for Barb G., God of love, In our church, we pray for Roger Benson, for Sarah Benson and Hannah, and for Scott and Brenda Berry and their families. We remember those who have birthday celebrations this week, especially Jen Bird, Brianna Gordon, Steve Swing, Barry Reese, Cameron Buttram, Gwendolyn Solon. And we keep in our hearts Jim and Lorraine Holt, who celebrated their anniversary this week. God of love. In the Niagara Diocese, we pray for St. Aidan's Oakville, the Reverend Fran Wallace, who is priest in charge, the Reverend Canon Marnie Nectaville, honorary assistant, and the people of that parish. God of love. And here I ask for your own prayers and petitions, either silently or aloud. Gracious God, we ask that you sustain us this week and that you will be present with us every day. Give us a hunger for your word and help us to make a quiet space to listen for you. You have now heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of wisdom, may the light of the eternal word, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, guide us to your glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our loving God. It is our joy and privilege to do so. In Christ, your Son, our Lord, and you are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by life. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and life, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, Lord our God, for this world which you have given us. You never cease to make it new, and you call us to work with you. You accept the work of our hands. Carry you. have made humankind in your image. Each one of us is fashioned in your likeness. And we are able to recognize your face in the faces of our brothers and sisters. have never desired to live apart from us, and you have taught us to know you through the law and the prophets, the apostles and evangelists, who told us the marvelous story of your love. And you have come to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. In him you have walked along our road. Look at us with human eyes, done the kind of things that we do, and share with us the joy that can never be lost. night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. 
This is my body. It is broken for you. Likewise, he also took the cup, offered you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Now you give us this body and blood, and we give ourselves to you through the death and the resurrection of your Son, through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, we can make you our eternal home. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray together. Our Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against, against us. Save, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves, a single living act of praise. Amen. Here at this table, Jesus is host. Come to this table. It is Christ who invites us and Christ who meets us here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
announcement I forgot to make. Uh, next week, the 12th, I will be at St. Paul's Westdale in the afternoon for Jazz Vespers. This Jazz Vespers will feature Elena Capillaris on uh, saxophone and vocals. Elena is uh, out in Saskatchewan this week with Rita Chiarelli. Anybody know? Do you know who Rita Chiarelli is? I know. Yeah. Well, she gets to play with me next week. <laughs> Would you stand for the blessing, please? May we find the road that leads to life. May we take the turns that bring right relationships. May we pause to accompany others on the way. And may we journey with God through Lent and long for the horizon and dawn. Amen. Amen. the road that leads to life. May we take the turn that bring right relationship. May we pause to accompany others on the way. And may we journey with God through length and along for the horizon and dawn.